Beef farms are characterised by a wide number of production systems and on this board we're going to look at the factors which influence which production systems uh, are most suitable for your farm. And there are a wide number of factors as you will see. Um, firstly, one of the most constraining factors on beef farms is labour. Beef farmers tend to be labour uh, poor in the sense that most are part time uh, and indeed the demographic sometimes lends itself to less labour being available uh, on beef farms. Secondly, from, the, from a labour perspective, there might be preferences in terms of the type of labour that you like to carry out on your farm. Some farmers are interested in breeding and in calving cows, other farmers are more interested uh, in finishing cattle, rearing cattle and so on. And that will influence the type of farm uh, and the type of beef system that you want to operate. Facilities have a huge influence on the beef system you operate on your farm. Some farms have very good facilities, have ample space to carry a, a large number of animals and these will tend to have the option to be higher stocked farms. Other farms less so. Indeed from a facilities point of view the type of facilities again have an influence on the type of system you will operate. Some farms again might have creep areas and so on and therefore uh, weanling and suckling systems are suitable. Others might have more slatted uh, type systems uh, and therefore growing and finishing cattle might be more suitable uh, for that uh, level of facilities on the farm. Land of course ultimately becomes a constraining factor on any farm at a certain level of stocking rate. So the amount of land, the hectareage that's owned, equally the quality of land will influence you know, the stocking density, also turnout dates and so on and so forth. Equally on beef farms we tend to have a lot of fragmentation and that will influence the type of beef system that that farm can carry and indeed the stocking rate that that farm will, uh, will operate at. Work-life balance is becoming increasingly important in society today. We're all being told that we need to balance the amount of time and effort that we allocate to leisure time and to family time and the amount of time that we allocate to our, to our work and in this case uh, our beef farm. Uh, Beef farms and, and farming in general is a little bit different than other sectors in that farms tend to be family operations, they tend to be family farms and therefore there is a crossover between your work uh, and your life and therefore getting the, that work-life balance can be a little bit more difficult but it is important to find time for leisure, to find time for holidays and to find time for your family. And of course one of the major drivers of, of any farm system, and beef farming indeed in this case is the same, is what income do you desire? What income is required from your beef farm system? And that will dictate the intensity at which you operate, uh, in other words the stocking rate, uh, and indeed the type of system that you might operate uh, on your farm. So we can have a wide, wide range of production systems. Uh, suckling systems, dairy calf to beef, uh, store to finish. So we have a wide range of production systems and these can be operated at a number of different stocking rates. So if we look for example in a suckling system you may be restricted from a land perspective, you may not have you know very uh, uh, large number of facilities or, or spaces for, for animals and therefore that might dictate that you know you operate a suckling system at a low level uh, of intensity, at a low stocking rate. Perhaps you're in a, in a dairy calf to beef system or it's a system that you're interested. Again, if you have adequate facilities, if you have a land type that will enable you to grow you know, the sufficient quantities of grass that is required at a high stocking rate. Uh, equally, if you're, uh, if, if you're a full-time farmer and therefore the income required from your, from your farm system is greater, uh, then you might operate this system at a higher stocking rate. And there are a number of permutations within store to beef, within dairy calf to beef, uh, and indeed within suckling uh, within which you might operate. Ultimately a huge amount of the profit from beef farms is derived from environmental schemes and from basic payment systems. So what scheme work and what schemes fit in with your farm will have a large influence on the farm system and the beef system that you operate. So what do you need to know from the point of view of your own system? Regardless of what system you operate and we'll be speaking about this uh, on the next board. You need to know the important KPIs. So what are the key performance indicators for the production system that you operate? If you're in suckling, a lot of these will be breeding performance indicators. It'll be age at first calving, calving interval uh, and so on. If it's a, a dairy calf to beef system, it will be issues like mortality and morbidity. It'll be daily gain. It'll be the amount of gain you achieve from, from grazed pasture. Uh, and equally those 
feeding and live weight gain KPIs become really important uh, for rearing systems, for uh, store to beef systems and so on. Identify your weaknesses. What are the weaknesses on the farm? Where do I need to improve uh, my farm operation? Is it uh, grass growth? Is it herbage utilisation? Is it animal performance? Do I have an issue, a health issue at some stage throughout the year? Identify what the weakness is on the farm and address that issue. Measure regularly uh, and review and revise. So you need to measure in order to manage. So measure regularly, whether it's grass growth, whether it's animal performance, whether it, from, a, from a suckler point of view, whether it's your fertility and reproductive performance, measure regularly, know your KPIs, uh, review what you're doing in light of those uh, results and the outcomes from your measurements and revise your production system on that basis. So those are the key issues around what production system you operate on your farm. When you have selected your production system, the important measures, uh, certainly at present, greenhouse gas emissions becoming more and more important, and economics always been a key factor. And indeed, from the Chagas Beef Programme's perspective, economics and farm profitability remains and always will remain the number one issue that we need to address. What I will look at on this second board are four of the most common production systems in operation on beef farms. Uh, and we look at the impact of operating those systems at a high level of efficiency on economics and on greenhouse gas emissions. So those four production systems are a suckler calf to weanling system and three finishing systems. Finishing at the end of the second grazing season, at the end of the second winter and during the third grazing season. For those finishing systems, I've looked at those in a weanling to beef, so a suckler progeny scenario, and on a dairy calf to beef scenario. For our suckling system at weanling, we're weaning at 330 kilos at nine months of age. For our second grazing season, our suckler progeny are being sold and finished at 342 kilos. Uh, that's a carcass weight at 21 months of age. And our dairy beef progeny at just over 280 kilos carcass at 20 months of age. At the end of the second winter, our suckler progeny are 385 kilos at about 23 months of age, and our dairy calf to beef progeny at almost 310 kilos uh, at 22 months of age. And if we go to a third grazing season, we're looking at suckler progeny coming in at around 410 kilos at 28 months of age, and our dairy calf to beef progeny, 343 kilos at 26 months of age. In this case, our dairy calf to beef progeny are early maturing crossbreds from the dairy herd, and we're operating all of these systems at in and around 2.4 livestock units per hectare, or about 190 kilos of organic nitrogen. For the economics, I'll base these on prevailing prices, and the details are all in your open day booklet. So, the upper graph here, we're looking at calf to weanling systems or our suckling systems. The green bar here represents greenhouse gas emissions, and I'm looking at that for that phase of the production system on a kilo of CO2 equivalents per kilo of live weight basis. And the orange bars are the economics, and these numbers are in hundreds of euros. So, for example, looking at 3.1 for our calf to weanling system, that's 310 euros net margin for that calf to weanling system. Uh, greenhouse gas emissions, 11.2 kilos of CO2 equivalents, carbon dioxide equivalents, for every kilo of live weight generated within that system. So let's look at our finishing systems based on suckler progeny. Our 21 month system, so purchasing a weanling at 330 kilos coming out of this system and finishing as a steer uh, at 21 months of age. Profitability, 1,100 euros. If we go to 23 months of age, profitability declines somewhat to 850 euros. And if we go to the third season at pasture, profitability declines again to 640 euros per, he per hectare. I've also put in in blue here uh, the margin per head for that particular system. And the margin per head, as you can see here, 270 euros for our 21 month system. And it's approximately the same across. Again, the details are in your open day booklet. Uh, 300 euros per head for our 28 month system. So in fact, 
Although profitability per hectare declines, our profit per head remains and in fact is slightly greater for our 28 month system. So a main driver of profitability in this, in this system is good margins per head and the capacity to carry additional animals where you slaughter earlier. Looking at the greenhouse gas emissions, going in the opposite direction. So um, 8.5 for our 21 month steer finishing system, that's 8.5 kilos per kilo of CO2 equivalents for every kilo gained at, during that phase of the life cycle, so from weaning to beef. And emissions increase all the way through to the third season at pasture, indicating the importance of slaughter age for these systems. For our dairy calf to beef system, very same trend, so I won't go through the detail, but you can see here profitability 950 euros, 780 euros, 520 euros per hectare as we go from 20 month to our third season at pasture. And you can see again uh, uh, profitability per head, 280 euros in that system, and remaining in and around 250 to 300 euros per head for our dairy calf to beef system. So again, slaughtering earlier, allowing uh, greater exploitation of grazed grass at the and slaughtering at the end of the second grazing season, and also facilitating a greater number of animals, really important in that system. Uh, the trend we saw in the suckler system in terms of slaughter age and the effect on greenhouse gas emissions follows through very clearly here. 5.7, somewhat lower than our suckling system, uh, but rising as slaughter ages decline, or, uh, advances. So as animals are slaughtered older, uh, greenhouse gas emissions per kilo of live weight increases. So I suppose what are the main messages from this board? I suppose high daily gain from pasture really, really important within these systems, particularly at present time. We have very high imported feed costs. They're, therefore, achieving high daily gain from pasture, in particular, in particular, if we want to meet the targets for second season slaughter, a very ambitious target requiring early births, uh, early calving dates, uh, and good performance from pasture right through the life cycle. And it also drives low greenhouse gas emissions. Margin per head, higher for the early slaughter systems. And really that's dictated by the carrying a high number of animals in those systems. What we find is that margin per head was quite similar for our grass finished system. So what I mean by grass finished is this, these systems 20 and 21 months, so at the end of the second grazing season, and this, these systems here 26 and 28 months, so during the third grazing season. So what we find is the margin per head for these two systems uh, very similar, slightly lower uh, when we go to finish uh, during the second winter. So the greater feed costs there mitigating against uh, profitability. So what's important? I suppose what is most important from this board is to fit animals to a particular production system, know the targets uh, and address issues that uh, are mitigating against meeting those targets. And what I mean by that is Animals need to be weighed or some assessment of the, the, the level of finish on those animals and then assign them to systems. So if you have a group of animals at this time of year, probably yearling animals, we're into July now, so yearling animals that will need to be directed either into a system finishing at the end of the second grazing se season, so if they're meeting their targets and we'll see those targets uh, in the next boards. Perhaps some of the more backward animals are more suitable for you know, shed finishing, or indeed going back to grass uh, during the third grazing season. So assess the animals on your farm and decide what system do those animals fit best into. And again, depending on whether they're suckler progeny or dairy calf to beef progeny, their weight targets will be different at this time of the year. And again, you'll see the detail of that in your booklet and on the next boards. So in summary, we need to improve farm economics per hectare and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. To do that, we need to optimize performance from pasture and reduce slaughter age. Thank you.